Good afternoon. Uh, it is Thursday, August 27th, the year of 2020, and it is right at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. This is the Panda Consulting Deep Drive Deep Dive Workshop. Um, my name is Frank Conkling. I'm sort of going to do the moderator. Usually I talk a whole lot. I'm going to try to not talk as much this, this week on this workshop. Um, I'm here. Chris is here. Why don't you introduce yourself, Chris? My name is Chris Conkling. I'm uh, Frank's son. Everyone in here right now has attended multiple of these webinars, so we're all pretty familiar with each other. Yeah, um, nope. Typically, uh, I, I watch the chat and convey all of your questions to Frank as he's presenting, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming, Frank, you're probably going to take over that responsibility today, right? Yeah, I, I'll follow the chat window and see um and, and see if either i can answer the questions or at least convey them forward so uh you you can sit back today chris <laughs> just relax we'll just we'll mute your mic or or whatever all right yeah yeah uh and then we've got you know sort of all the normal people but but this i think is is going to be a really good workshop um the topic this week is vector tiles and one of the reasons i'm stepping back is i don't have a whole lot of experience with vector tiles i know what they are i know how to use them but i've never really created them and i wanted to to get some people that at least have done this a couple times so we've got two people who are going to make presentations the first one is mark falls and you've seen mark in here quite a few times mark is um from Minnesota, and uh, he's going to give us a, a, a good presentation on what they are, how to use them, that sort of thing. And then after Mark is done, uh, we're also going to have Ned Cake. And those of you that have come to the deep dives know Ned. He's he's from uh, uh, Tallahassee Leon County GIS in down here in Florida. And Ned's done this also. Um, and Ned, I think, is going to show us a, a little bit more and show how he's using it. So I'm going to be quiet now. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat window. We're going to go and um, mute everybody. And um, let's go ahead and start. Go ahead, Mark. I guess I need to make sure you're unmuted, Mark. Sorry. Uh, All right. Can perfect. you hear me now? We can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Hello. Um, I'm Mark Folds from Lyon County, Minnesota. And anyways, I just wanted to present um, some of my experiences with vector tiles. And I myself am pretty new to vector tiles, so I will share a little bit about what I found with them and also just getting started with vector tiles from a complete beginner's perspective. So anyways, without further ado, we'll move on to the next slide and begin. Now, um, many of you are aware of using caches for um, surfing out GIS on um, to the internet. Um, and before we had caches, each server had to generate each and every request. It was slow, um, so creators had to compensate by creating simplistic maps without much detail. Um, and that's how things started with um, ArcGIS, um, ArcIMS, and also Map Server. And moving on, um, they found that drawing each and then every request was rather slow, so they started with caching. Um, creating raster caches is very fast. Well, not creating them, but displaying them is very fast. But the disadvantage is it took a huge amount of space um, on the server. And, um, you know, we had one where we had a hybrid cache, and then we had to build a whole the hybrid cache having some uh, of the townships and cities at one level of view and then 
moving on to the air photo at another level of view. That was awfully slow and it took a lot of space and we ended up having two caches, one for the hybrid, and one for air photos, which was very inefficient, I thought. And then um, later on, the smartphone was born and one of the issues with smartphones is that the data plans are very expensive. Um, and so we needed a way to send out maps to people without sending so much information. And that's what Google Maps did and also Map uh, Box 2000 and 2015 Mac Mapbox also started, and they used vector tiles to do this. Um, and vector tiles pretty much are similar to the raster tiles, except instead of sharing the exact pixel information for each and every um, spot, it sent out the actual line work, and it would chunk up um, the line work in various boxes depending on how detailed your information is. So obviously in downtown, there's more information than out in the sea where it's just a blue box. And I'll get to the demo later on. Um, some of the interesting things about vector tiles is because you're not sharing rasters, the vector tiles are very small. Um, I found one service where it was 20 terabytes for the whole world um, using raster tiles and only 40 gigabytes with uh, vector tiles. And with um, vector tiles, um, when you load that on initially, a default style is sent, which includes you know how you should label different things, what colors and what shields are on your map, um, but it also allows the client to modify certain things if they don't like it. The performance is greatly improved. On the server side, all they gotta send out is the tile of information. There's no processing involved. And they leave it up to the uh, client to render the information on their local machine. Um, Another interesting thing about vector tiles is with ArcGIS Online, they charge one two hundredth of the price compared to hosting feature services, which would be storing the actual GIS information and using um, Arc Online to um, draw all the maps and features for you. And we still need raster tiles though, beyond just vector tiles, because they're still used for air photos and elevation data sets. Um, and having vector data outside of the raster data allows us to have a more liberal compression um, than just having um, the raster tiles for air photos. So for example, on the image here, I can compress things down to a 25% quality and people won't even notice it, but you would notice a lot of issues if I had the actual streets and line work in there as well. <clears throat> so, um, and then web feature services are still needed as well. Um, the, with vector tiles, it's pretty much only sending the line work and symbology. Feature service are still needed for attribute queries or searching and that kind of thing. Um, and also certain software cannot take care of, or cannot take advantage of vector, vector tiles yet. For example, there's no support in ArcMap and I doubt there will ever be. Um, ArcGIS.com, we can modify styles in there. However, the style editor is somewhat buggy yet, and we'll 
deal with that too. In, in Arc Pro, um, we can publish vector tiles, but I haven't come across a way of stylizing them in Arc Pro yet. And then other software has limited support such as QGIS. Um, but I, I expect that support among Esri products and other products will get better as they finish up adding some of the functionality from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. So anyways, once again, vector tiles, they share the actual um, data instead of a raster set. And you can change <clears throat> and you can have different projections. You can update the um, area of interest. And most importantly, I think, is you can change the styles and you can use it in a bunch of the modern clients. Um, and anyways, we'll take a look at publishing. We can do it in ArcGIS Pro, and we also can publish vector tiles using uh, some third-party applications as well. Um, so we'll uh, just go through and maybe instead of doing the presentation, I'll just load Arc Pro. All right, one moment. And this is my ArcGIS Pro map. Um, and it's your generic map. We'll take a look at certain things here. We have on here the real Minnesota state symbols for the highways, some road shields. And if we zoom in, we'll take a look at our lakes. And we have you know, a fancy label that goes across the lake. And we also have um, a gradient fill for the lakes. Our address points have two labels, the road and the address number. Our townships are texturized um, in some spots and clear on others. Um, I will admit this map is not perfect in any way, shape, or form, but we're just using it to kind of see what happens when we publish vector tiles. Um, so anyways, without further ado, I'll show what that looks like. So on our map here, um, we'll start with the source. And just like everything else, we'll start with a share button if we want to share it. And you'll select web layer and hit publish web layer. Then the sharing shares a web layer um, panel will show up. And here's the key part where you want to change the layer type from a feature to a vector tile. And we will put it in an area, share, um, give it a better name. And then on the tiling scheme, you can pick your own uh, projection. I like to use it, leave it as the uh, Google Maps ArcGIS Online projection. You can set a level of detail. I usually leave that alone. Um, you'll notice here that it builds the cache on our local machine. Um, and the tiling format, we can index it kind of like that one map near San Diego where um, we use different sizes for areas that are more condensed with information. Um, and that's up to you how you want to leave that. Um, and then also you can allow clients to export cache tiles so they don't have to hit your server. And when you look at the content button here, You'll notice you have two sets of information. You have the vector tiles um, 
this is your vector tile layer, that's the actual information. And then the vector tile um, layer, that's going to be the style. And we'll just hit publish. And this is a countywide data set. And it will analyze the data and we'll see what happens here. So, Mark, just while we're waiting on that. So, yeah. since it's creating the cache locally, uh, and then it's going to move that up into RTS Online. You don't get charged for any geoprocessing up on AGOL. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So all we're paying for then is the storage. Correct. Yeah. And Thank one you. of the things with the storage, um, because ArcGIS Online isn't doing anything with it it doesn't have to render the data it just sends the data back out it is incredibly cheap to host on arcgis online um, and it also takes a very small amount of data and we'll take a look at that once we have our information uploaded okay and that's still not incredibly fast but we'll let it keep going So then, then the question I have, and, mm -hmm. and again, I'll sort of to keep conversation and make sure we don't have any dead air. So if that's the case, if you have labeling turned on here and you have scale dependent labeling turned on, um, does that mean that you can have parcels with dimensions using ArcGIS Pro labeling styles and create a vector cache on it and those dimensions would then be available on the web map on RTS Online? Um, partially. And so with vector tiles, um, Mapbox started with vector tiles and the information that you can host on Mapbox for styling and for labeling is not what you get with ArcGIS Pro. It's a lot better than um, the hit the label, decide if you want a halo or not with ArcGIS.com. But um, there are certain things where it will retain information and certain things that you'll lose it on. And I don't know exactly for, um, for sure what you can keep and what you can't. Okay. Um, and we'll take a look and find out. So already published the layer for us and we'll just take a look. So in this um, ArcGIS Pro project, I set up a couple different maps here and just in case something went wrong, I have these here on a previously loaded um, map. And here's your vector tiles. Um, that was created and we'll see what information was retained and what was lost. So you'll notice it kept the nice symbols for the roads and it kept our symbology. Um, you know, it has the case lines on there. Um, with the townships, it kept the um, textured file and You'll notice one thing that's very significant is the speed that things draw. I mean, this with the vector tiles, things show up pretty much instantaneously um, versus the original map where it's not bad, but you got to wait for things to draw. Um, and we'll notice a couple things that were lost. First of all, it didn't know what to do with this um, gradient, the, the gradient fill. Um, but um, so the watercolor was lost. And then the other thing you'll notice on here, our labels had um, the street and the house number and our vector tiles they only show the street name. 
And that actually is a bug with Esri right now. And we'll take a look at how we can fix that. Um, but those are, that's just a couple things where I haven't really seen great document documentation as far as what will be kept and what's lost. So it, to me, it was just a, a trial and error where we um, publish something, find out it doesn't work quite right, publish it again, and go from there. So anyways, that's what it looks like on um, ArcGIS Pro. And we'll go to um, ArcGIS.com here, and here is my vector tile layer. It's, we'll just view item details. And it stored basically my whole county's information in a file that's eight megabytes eight, in eight. size. Interesting. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's almost the size of the initial data itself. Um, and we'll also take a look at um, the vector tile layer itself, and it'll the default layer will be called um, whatever you named it, and then it, then it will be vector tile layer. And this is what it looks like in ArcGIS.com. Once again, you'll see, you'll notice it has the same issues as Arc Pro. And there are there are a couple bugs that I found. You'll notice that if the labels are set differently for the scale than particular features, you'll see features that don't exist, but the labels are there. Um, that I noticed was one issue, but um, with ArcGIS.com, we can change around things because they are vector tiles. It's sending us the information. So if we don't like, for example, this lime green color that I have for the roads, if someone thinks it's awful, they can change it. And when you change it, it'll say, well, you can change the style. This will make a copy. Um, oh. And that'll bring up the style editor. So on here, you have a lot of different things that you can change. And this will also give you a clue as far as what vector tiles can and cannot do. But we'll start by editing by color. Now, I kind of wish this was available in Arc Pro. So here's our ugly lime green color. And we'll click on that. And instead of using lime green, let's pick something like a purple. And apply. And now instantly, the colors of our roads have changed. We didn't have to go back and republish anything. It's just right there. So I can publish the data in one color and anyone else that has access to this can change it if they so choose. And we can also change the road shields if we wanted to. Um, so the way that we vector tiles keeps the road shields shields in there is it saves the actual sprites or the images and we can change these around if we wanted to so it's got my um, address point uh, marker the road shields for us highways state highways and so on and so forth and in individual layers we still have control over what's going on. And we'll just pick on the address points since you talked about labeling. And we'll notice um, here it only has our state highway 19. 
for the address label. Well, what's going on here? Because there's two labels in there, the address number and the street name. So if I go here and I take a look, it's trying to label this, but it's not doing it quite right. And I found out that there's some issues with it, um, but we have control over the visible zoom range. If we want an image on the label, size, the font, um, the halo and um, opacity and so on and so forth. Um, and we'll change the padding on here. And we'll also make sure this labels no matter what. So you can see it's trying to label um, right over the existing street name, but you'll notice the position is in the bottom left, which is kind of surprising to me. And we can change the position around and this is not perfect, but you can try it. And with the, once we move it back to top left, then it figures out, oh, we'll just move it to the right side. And that's one of the frustrating things that I found about labeling, um, but it's just something to keep in mind. And anyways, that's labeling and changing things around. And you can also change- So Mark, I have a, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, before we go much further, uh, Kelly was asking, um, you had mentioned earlier a bug regarding uh, it's showing the labels on the streets, but not the actual feature. Um, has that actually been reported? And is there some way of, of indicating what's actually causing that bug? Can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, I, I talked to Ezra and I let him know about that issue. Um, the other one I found is um, if we wanted to, change the color of the lake because it didn't come through um, we can go through and it changed my textured color um, to no color and i noticed in certain situations oops we can color it to blue or something but if we go back I'm sorry, picked the wrong one here. If I try to make that transparent, then it turns my light to black. So they're also aware of that issue as well. Um, but anyways, um, it's just something that I noticed where there's some bugs in here. That so, you so need to could, be aware of. could you possibly go and just change it with by changing the the opacity on it? Yep, and that's one that, so that one way is that I or but it won't be a gradient. Hmm. Uh, so you'll have a single color, but it won't be any sort of gradient fill in there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And another thing that's interesting, um, it did keep, um my label here, but you'll notice it's flashing in and out. And it's just because it's having a trouble displaying that. And I found out it's just because the label is too large. So if I move the size down from 64 to 32, oh, should be shown, but it's not. I'll just make it really small, not really big, really small. Hmm. Well, earlier today, it would show up the label if I change that around. But once I do that and I hit save, it keeps all my changes. Um, that's just uh, the style editor that I found 
when I publish the vector tiles and I change the styles within ArcGIS Online. So um, I don't know, those are just some of the things that I found with um, publishing vector tiles is it takes up very little space and it is extremely fast. So for me, um, oh, and I'll get back to that error in a moment or issue, that's not really an error, but that was going back to the labeling right. for address points. We don't want to show our overlap. So the other thing you mentioned was that the um, this is actually the the vector tiles are basically nothing more than a, a, a using some older terminology. It's a sort of a cartographic representation. It has no attribute on it. Is that correct? Correct. So if you wanted to set something up where people could see pop-ups and that kind of thing as well, what you'd need to do is you'd need to set up a feature service um, so that ArcGIS could look at the feature service to show a pop-up. And I believe that I did that in here. Oh, maybe not. So you can um, enable pop-ups and pull information. At least I did it earlier, but you can um, change the pop-up source. Oh, that would be why I... I deleted the layer that it was looking at. The address is here. There we go. Hmm. I apologize, I forgot about that before I deleted it's the a, service it's... that it's looking at. But anyways, the pop-up would look at a feature service that's hiding behind there. So what you do with that is you, you'd, you would use the vector tile for the speed um, and then use the feature service for searching and identifying and that kind of stuff. Um, because I don't know for sure, but I believe the only information that the vector tiles save is enough to draw the symbology and enough to label the items. In fact, once you're in a vector tile, you cannot change the label text. You can um, format it so you could change um, West College Drive to all uppercase. You can make the labels larger or smaller, change the font, but you can't change, for example, the estimated, this to the estimated market value mm -hmm. unless you did that as you're publishing. Okay, good. All right. Um, Mark, do you have any other slides or anything else you want to? Um, you know, I think that's about it for the most part. Um, you know, a couple of the takeaways that I have um, on this, if, if you do try working with vector tiles, what I would recommend is making the project in ArcGIS Pro and publishing it and if you find something that you don't like, try to publish it again, because um, it's a lot easier to fix problems in ArcGIS Pro than to try to work through this editor sure and yeah. make changes. Interesting. Um, yep, that's one thing I found. But the other thing that I found is vector tiles could be a game changer for 
a lot of different organizations. So, um, you know, very large organizations can save space, but also um, very small organizations that can't have their own GIS server that might just have one person in the building, um, they can also create halfway decent looking maps. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I think I think the immediate takeaway is that vector tiles, because they are so inexpensive as far as even generating them and storing them, is a really good way for us to all up our our cartographic quality on all these services that that we're producing for ArcGIS Online. Great way to go and do it. Um, to go and and make it much much more pleasing, much more informative for what's being consumed. Because I know an awful lot of people are still just throwing up feature services with limited functionality and such. So I I think you're right with that. That it's it is a good way for us to all go and sort of just take the next step up and start doing things a little bit better as far as what's being represented and how we're actually going and doing that so hey thank you mark that was that was really really informative um i think we answered all the questions that we had um i it, do you have anything else to add otherwise i'm going to flip it over to to ned um um, no, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, Ned, why don't you take over and um, go ahead and start showing what you're doing. Um, and let me make sure you, you are not muted, Ned. Can we hear you? Uh, still can't hear you, Ned. Uh, I'm not sure why. All right, I think I'm unmuted now. There you go. Can you hear me? There you go. I'm sorry. Not sure how that happened. That's okay. I think that um, all right because you're on because you're on the phone. Even though you were muted, it didn't show me you were muted. So that was my fault. Sorry. Uh, okay. Go ahead. That's okay. So my name is Ned Cake. I work with Tallahassee Leon County GIS. Um, I do content management in ArcGIS Online. I'm also uh, ArcGIS server. I make most of our services and register them for ArcGIS Online. And for vector tiles for Tallahassee Leon County, you know the, the old adage that necessity is the mother of invention. Well, we certainly qualify for that with uh, Three hurricanes in a row, um, Hermine, Irma, and Michael, knock on wood that there won't be one this year, um, we were struggling with data collection in the field when all of the um, power is out and none of the towers have power. Uh, fortunately, during those times, GPS still works, but if you don't have a map loaded and some of that can work offline, then you're not gonna be able to do much in terms of initial damage assessment. So um, throughout the last three years leading up to Hurricane Michael, we started working on, or I started working on a vector tile map um, that I would use in ArcGIS, or that I created in ArcGIS Pro, and going through multiple variations of the map and how to publish it, and when to publish it, and how often we can update it. I'm gonna kind of share um, what we came across and the fact that we initially built this for emergency management, you know, it, it turns out it's pretty terrific for other things like applications and ArcGIS Pro. Um, so just, uh, this is our first one. This is uh, just Leon County street map. But what you'll see here is that the speed of it and the detail, and when we get down to a street level, we begin to see buildings in the neighborhoods. We begin to see our impervious surface layers underneath and buildings. And if we get down just a little bit closer, 
um, rooftop addresses will begin to appear. And these rooftop addresses uh, are important in our damage assessment data collection, and they, that's how they typically are seen is in damage assessment data collection. But because I can update this map layer um, as, of, as often as I like and very quickly, it, it really doesn't have much cost associated in terms of uh, staff time to update this thing. So one of the things I wanted to, to show you is that um, TLC GIS, um, through ArcGIS Online, we maintain, this is a capability in ArcGIS Online, we maintain a base map group. And the, this is our base map group, and these are the base map layers that everybody in our organization has access to. They are numbered, and they all have thumbnails. And they are numbered because in a web application, it helps, it puts them all in order. And we do little nice things like put flags on and banners to say what's new or what's the latest or what's just been added. And you can see here, um, Jacob Coble's on the call. Um, we have, he's put hours and hours of time into our historical um, imagery. And that's all available in our base map switcher too. And down here at the very bottom is this brand new vector tile. So you can see I've only added out a couple of months, and it's pretty popular, 10,000 hits for that particular map. Um, so let me uh, back up one here to my story map, and I want to show you how that plays out in a typical arc application. So this is Web App Builder, and the default is one of our traditional Um, tiles in the background. I'm going to turn off these other layers so that you can see it. This is what we call our gene map. It's a Google clone and it's a traditional cache from ArcGIS server and it takes 18 hours to build and has several million tiles associated with it. Nice and fast, but man, it is hard to update. We only do it really Quarterly is when we're supposed to do it, but sometimes it's even less than that just because it takes so much time to do it and so much it's so in intensive on the servers. We have a special server set aside just to build cache. So you can see it's very similar. So now this is how the base map widget appears. These are all the maps I showed you before from ArcGIS Online. And down here, if I want to switch to vector tile, you can see it's a nice, highly detailed map. It's the same map we were looking at before, and it's nice and fast. The labeling is nice. Um, I will say, in, in reference to what Mark was talking about, you know, I use a lot of um, labeling and um, Mapplex, and you're right, Mapbox doesn't do a very good job of uh, taking those Mapplex commands and, and making them come out. I would never put labels this close together. You know, I think that I have them uh, 250 pixels apart is where their point, our point set is apart, is how they're supposed to appear. But, you know, for some, I, I will take this for the speed. It does a nice job. So you can see I've got some nice high detail here on the, the over and under for, um, the overpasses here on Franklin, and then a train bridge over here. So it does a nice job of that. And the next thing I'll do is kind of show you the map behind this. So I'm going to switch over here. Let me know, Frank, if you can't see this. Nope, we can see it. Um, okay, so this is, we're on um, our caching server at TLC GIS. It's called TLC AGS Cache. Um, and this is the map project, and I run it here because um, I can, and it's fast, and all of the data is loaded locally, and it's updated daily, so when I go to update this cache all the way to server, I can update it in, um, I think, seven to eight minutes typically is how long it takes to run, and so Rather than the manual process of sharing this, I typically use a model to do it. So here are my models. And I wanna put this in edit mode for now just so you can see how it's put together and just how simple it is too. 
All right, so we have create vector tile package. That's one of the things it's gonna do along the way. And it's creating a, a vector tile package. It's gonna have the name I've specified. It's called update. And that'll, you'll understand why it's gonna be called update shortly, because I'll show all that. Um, it is, that's the top level, that's the bottom level. Um, I put a description in and my tags and the place I want it to land. So it's gonna land on this server, the, the packages. And the input map is already defined, or it'll be defined as part of one of the parameters, but the input map is the county street map, this guy. And okay, and it's warning us that that already exists, but that's okay, we're gonna overwrite it. And the next thing is share package. So this pushes the VTPK up um, to ArcGIS Online, where it gets the name update. And this one right here, it is, these are all parameterized, but it is the target one, which is the existing vector tile that's already published in the cloud. It's gonna generate a, an archive in case something goes wrong with it and I need to quickly replace it. And then um, this is the update layer we created in the last step. So if I close this, don't save the changes. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is that we recently renamed our railroads. They were purchased by another company. It used to be CSX, now it's FGNA Railroad. So I want to update that label. And this thing already knows what to do. I'm just going to change the date. And I'm not worried about the red splats there because they are data that just needs to be replaced. So this should run with ease. So it's an 08. 27, 2020. And I'm gonna hit run. Hold on, let's do this. Let's repoint this guy. For some reason it makes me repoint this every time. So when I go into here, my content, type the word street map. should come up in the top of my content and I really want the, I was afraid of this. So let me run this one time through the manual process and then we'll go from there, okay? You got it. I apologize, it's taken us, I apologize, this is taking a second. It doesn't seem to want to update, recognize the update file that I've generated. So let's go back to catalog and edit. And what I want you to see is how quickly this runs. From StreetMap. And there's a story that goes along with that. And is that, is that I was at uh, UC last time we had an actual UC. Hmm. And I was, you know, wanting to towards everything was winding down and I was wandering around in the mapping section and there was a, a lonely technician all, all by herself. And I, I had been looking around to see where they were talking about vector tiles and I couldn't really find anything. And I found her and she had a sample project where she was building a map like this one with tons of detail of New Zealand. And it took about four minutes to create the tile package. So let's run this. And so it's generating all, everything that it needs in a tile package to go out to the web. And because we're on a server, this should take very little time at all. all right. um, so while that's running, if there are any questions so far, um, I'll come back to that in just a second because I wanted to show you this. So some of the things I'm experimenting with right now in vector tile land are 
reference layers for aerial photography, and that's what this particular map is showing. As uh, these labels and these streets are built in two separate vector tile services. And what ends up happening is we get a nice hybrid effect as we zoom in and pan around. And because we're Leon County, if I just showed you aerial, aerial photography, you might not even be able to see the streets because we are just silly with live oak trees and other big trees that, well, that you're, cover up our roads. You have canopy trees all over the place. And matter of fact, you've got ordinances where you can't cut canopy trees. So yeah, completely understood. That's right. So now you've got a nice effect and you can see here that the, the uh, uh, imagery mosaic that's behind this is not nearly as fast as the vector tile that's already drawn. So let's go back to here. Almost done creating this. And this is countywide um, all the way down to a 1 to 40, 142 scale, which is one of the Bing um, Google scales wow. for Web Mercator. And you know, think about this. Um, we're almost done with this because the other processes for this are just really, really, really simple. Um, so while, while, we're waiting on this, while we're waiting on this, it's a perfect opportunity. One of the things that Mark was talking about, or, or he had, had messaged me, he said, um, the only thing you forgot to do was, was talk about optimizing the ve vector tiles. Um, and he said, usually what you'll do is you'll generalize the data, generalize the data, remove unnecessary fields, only store data that can be useful on the map. Um, Mark, can you add anything to that? I mean, you, you do want to think of. Thanks for attending. And we hope you enjoyed this workshop. If you have questions, would like some more details about anything we discussed during this workshop, or if you or anyone at your organization would like information about training, support, or ways in which we can help you with your GIS needs, please contact me at frank at pandaconsulting.com or call me at 561-691-3277 and we can discuss how we can help you with your needs.